instead just walk away from it. And that is definitely not the solution. You're so right about that, Nafisa. And that was actually something that we covered yesterday in our support group. Um, we feed ourselves these lies and we become conditioned by these lies that inevitably perpetuates violence. Or it's it's the, the fact that we subscribe to these lies that enable us to become violent or enable us to be victims of violence. And one of those lies is that all a marriage needs is love and that it's going to be easy and that there's no, there's no need for compromise or no uh, room for, uh, you know, for, for any errors. For any errors. And so that was an interesting uh, topic that we covered last night. So I'm glad that you brought that up because that isn't the solution to moving forward. The solution is looking for healthy alternatives, looking for, for, for ways to communicate effectively, to manage conflict better. But we can't do any of that before we, we have a degree of understanding of who we are before we be even begin to engage with our partners. I find that in very interesting that you bring that up. And I have a very interesting question for you. Um, a lot of the times you find you're in a relationship with a narcissist. And that's the type of people that always actually make themselves look like the victims when instead they are the ones victimizing the person that they're in the relationship with. What sort of advice would you give people that are in that situation? How do they deal with it? How do they move on from it? So I'm not in the business of giving advice, okay? As a life coach, one of the first things I will tell a client when they come into session with me in this office, I'll say, I'm not here to give you advice and I'm not here to tell you what to do. Using a set of skills and tools, we'll unpack what you are going through so that we can find the right kind of solutions for you. So there is no one size fits all approach to any kind of abuse or how to deal with any kind of abuser. So I... I uh, you know, it's difficult to be able to say, oh, you know what, here's the full picture and, and here's the solution because it really, really doesn't work that way. But I think when it comes to being a victim of any kind of abuse, it's so tough to, to, uh, um, to assess whether a situation has room for improvement or whether there is just going to be that continuous cycle. And when I say whether there's room for improvement, I mean whether the perpetrator of the abuse has any inclination to wanting to develop him or herself, wanting mm. to work on him or herself. And those are the distinctions that need to be made before you decide whether you want to stay or whether you want to leave. I think that if somebody shows some kind of degree of um, acknowledgement first, because the first step to recovery in any kind of situation is acknowledgement. So if the perpetrator is going to have that level of acknowledgement. That could be a hint. Okay, you know what? There might be room for us to move forward to progress. Uh, a lot of the times, there is no acknowledgement. And I mean, obviously, that's, the, that's one of the traits of a narcissist is that they will never ever take accountability for what they've done. And they'll always spin it around and make it the other person's problem. Narcissists always also thrive off attention, whether it's positive or negative attention. They feed off that energy of that attention. So if you're dealing with a narcissist, I feel you have to be really thorough in your own understanding of yourself. And you mm -hmm. have to really... Um, I, gosh, this is really complicated because I don't want to tell people, run away, run as far as you can. But because we, we want to inspire yeah. hope, exactly. do you know what I'm saying? And we make to that there's room for improvement in any in everybody's lives. But you have to assess your situation and understand and and consider if it's something that you want to progress in and if you're willing to to put in the effort. Because it's not just an uh, it's not just the effort for the abuser. It's also an effort that the victim in that relationship needs to decide. Am I willing to put in this effort? Am I willing to forgive? Am I willing to move forward? Those are all of the questions that you have to be willing to answer in the affirmative to move on in your relationship. That's so true. Tahir, let's talk about last night's session. What did you think about it and, and how well did it go? Um, what, what, you know, as uh, Jahara was saying, people want to now reach out, 
they, they, it, it goes to show that there is that kind of situation where people are looking for support structures because they do want to better their relationships, but they actually do not know where to start. And this is where you come in. And I think what you're doing with this Heal for Hope is absolutely phenomenal because the, the word alone says my, uh, a, a lot. It's, it's, it's many a words spoken already. That word hope uh, says enough to many couples as such. You know, they know that there's a support structure out there and that they don't have to necessarily give up, but there's a way to sort it out. So what was it like last night? Paint the picture for me. I think it was, um, it was nerve-wracking. Leading up was, sure, we, there was countless endless nights. Um, we, mm. we, 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 we want, we, we give it, so we developed a 12 week program and I think um, it was true it, because it took a lot out of us, but it was a lot of nerves getting up to it. But I think it was overall was very well received. It's something that I think we need in our community. And of course, it was our first ones. There's things we can improve on, things we can do better. And that's all we can do is look forward is how we can make it better. And uh, the engagement was phenomenal. We had people uh, sharing on the group and it was, it was lovely. Yeah. And I think it also gave people, like I say, that understanding to say that where I am right now, um, here's these two individuals that have come from from positions that were they were in and now they're in, in a totally different space. So there is room for improvement in the relationship itself. And as you were saying, each one's problem is different and it's customized, but it's how we deal with it to, in order to be able to move forward into that relationship. And I think understanding and respect is also very important. Definitely. And if we think about abuse, what we've actually began to understand is that abuse stems from a need to control. So it's a system of power. It's exercising this control and power over your partner. So when we dissemble that need for control and power and understand where it comes from, understand how we've told ourselves these lies that make us believe that we have the right to exercise this power and control. It makes us understand ourselves better, makes us understand our abusers better, and it develops an empathy that essentially we want to develop so that we can eradicate this at the core. Mm, I agree with you because actually what happens is if you notice this happening in a pattern uh, of, from speaking to a lot of people that have gone through this, um, there starts, you know, there's this remorse that starts actually taking place, which is actually not healthy for the relationship as such. You know, you're talking about a pattern and I use this whiteboard and the whiteboard um, behind the phone to literally um, plot the pattern. There are four stages of that pattern and there, there are identifiable points that you can break that pattern. So you're talking about the pattern. This is not uncommon. This is not unfamiliar. This is a pattern mm -hmm. that exists in all abusive relationships. And that's what we need to identify so that we can pinpoint the places where we can change our communication mm -hmm. style, where we can manage conflict differently so that we can if, if effectively and sustainably break that pattern. Mm. Child, for you, what was your breaking point? I mean, because a lot of the times, you know, couples will sit down and you find they're trying to solve the problem, but it, it ends up getting worse because they start, you know, that blame game starts. Uh, you yeah. did this and it's your fault and it's your fault and, and nobody's willing to accept. Um, what would you say was your breaking point? And the reason I asked this question is I want people to understand that we're not perfect human beings. We're going to air. But it's how we actually learn from that and grow ourselves and change ourselves for the better so that we can have better relationships, not just as a couple, but on the whole, on a holistic level as well. Because these relationships that we have, if, we, if we're having issues in a couple situation, imagine what's happening when we go outside because there's certain things that we're taking with us. Definitely. So I think for me, um, there wasn't a single point in time that I could say was a breaking point. There was a, 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 a combination of a lot of um, things. There was, there was definitely a point in time where I realized that something changed. There was a mental shift. Um, and I think it was when I finally, when it was finally when I, it, I, I realized that I, I needed to take accountability and I needed to actually own it and not brush it under the carpet, brush it off anymore or say, no, it's it's someone else's fault or it's her fault or try and spin it around. It needed to be, it needed to, and that was, I think, a big turning point for us. And in the same breath, 
him taking accountability also gave me the opportunity to take accountability for all of my toxic traits in our relationship because like you just said nobody is perfect so nobody is going to be exempt of flaws or exempt of sin or exempt of of doing things incorrectly so it gave me the opportunity to reflect on how i could have managed Dif- manage things differently or how i mm. could have steered a conversation mm. in a different mm. way so that it wouldn't have escalated there were just so many revelations after that moment because we were no longer playing the blame game yes. and we were no longer pointing fingers at each other it was now about okay how can yes. i work on myself so that we can work on this together it became yes. a collective effort and no longer me against you us versing each other it became this collective goal to fix ourselves for our marriage and i think you mentioned there that we meant to be fixed ourselves and i think that's what we we was also a, a, a huge turning point is when we stopped focusing on trying to fix our marriage and we tried to fix and ourselves fix each other. and fix each other yeah. and try to fix ourselves because when we try to work, start working on ourselves the 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 breakthroughs that we had the triple the triple effect it, it ended up having a huge impact on our marriage mm-hmm. uh was possible Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense, and I understand what you're saying. And you know, a, a lot of the times, I think we don't realize it starts with we ourselves. Um, and and if we can better ourselves and realize our mistakes and 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 our errors, and try and make us better human beings, it will grow us in many directions. And that's what you've done to be able to grow yourselves is start with each other. And I think that's the most valuable point that people need to learn is that uh, as human beings, we all err in some way or the other. But in order to grow in a relationship, it's having being able to give uh, back, but from your uh, learning to grow from yourself first. Would you agree with me on that? One hundred percent. I often use the analogy: you're a vessel of water, so you're a you're a bottle of water, okay? And mm-hmm. you are, as a mother, as a wife, you're constantly feeding everybody out of this vessel until you're depleted. But then what we do is we go to the people who deplete us and expect them to fill that that vessel for us. when it is our responsibility to fill our own vessels to fill mm. ourselves and nurture ourselves so that when we enter into our relationships or when we parent or when we work we're not working from an empty vessel we are working from a place of fullness from a place of love and that's what we want to do that's what we essentially the message that we want to convey that it starts from yourself and then when you give you giving from a place of love without this expectation of having anybody fulfill you or having anybody uh, replenish what has been lost in the relationship I like how you use that vessel as an example because a lot of the times what happens is and you were talking about toxic relationships um is we tend to actually fill the vessel with all the incorrect things and it's having to realize it's the value of that vessel and what needs to be filled in there what sort of essence needs to go into that vessel in order for us to have good relationships So what do you think are those assets that need to be invested in yourself? I'm just so curious to hear. <laughs> you you <laughs> seem to be spinning it around a bit. You're spinning it around, putting the ball down <laughs> my foot. This is this is very interesting. Okay. So I w- I would actually say firstly it comes uh, to to having to understand each other compromise is very important so when you're in a relationship um it's also respect because um each individual is different so there's certain things about them that you know that they have these flaws and that but it's about respecting them and seeing the good in them as opposed to the bad in them so i think you'd fill your vessel with the good uh, attributes that they have as opposed to the bad ones so in that way you're taking away some of the toxic elements that would go into the vessel um it's about also creating this understanding i think if we don't understand each other we are going to work past each other because there's always going to be that conflict element um and i think conflict is one of the toxic things that actually goes into the vessel as such um the most important thing for me i would say is and and you and you've said this before would be love um i think a lot of the times and especially in today's day and age uh, with the types of anxiety levels and things that we are going through um now with covid 19 we forget that that is the most important aspect that is going to help us get through a lot of the things that we have and it's also a sunnah because rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam also sallam also taught us about how important it, it is and that the the world rotates around the world love 
So mm-hmm. I think those are the types of things we would put into a vessel to be create creating a better environment and compromise as well. Because sometimes you find yourself in a conflictive situation um, and having to meet halfway actually eradicates a lot of the issues that could then surface uh, and, and get worse, should, should we say. So what would you think you about my vessel? I loved it. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. And, you know, you, you touched on so many things that we actually spoke about in our session last night. Really? Um, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. So I, honestly, to- I wasn't watching there, eh? I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so with regards to power and control, one of the things that we expect, um, okay, let's, let's, let's go into the lies that we tell ourselves, the lies that we subscribe to that inevitably determines whether we have the potential to abuse or whether we have the potential not to abuse. And these are not set in stone, but these are just kind like kind of guidelines, okay? One mm-hmm. of them you briefly spoke about is this expectation for our partners to change, okay? Mm-hmm. And when we have this idea, now remember, abuse is about power and control. And when I say abuse, I'm using the word abuse in the very, very broad sense, So that's the emotional abuse, that's the financial abuse, that's the psychological abuse, and of course, the physical abuse. And more often than not, the financial and the emotional abuse happens in a greater extent than the physical abuse. The physical abuse will be the cherry on the top, and but the emotional and the financial abuse will exist and occur more often, okay? Mm -hmm. And then... When we understand that that stems from power and control and we tell ourselves this lie that if only my partner would change, everything would be better. Or if only this person would change, everything would be better. This lie is making us believe that the world has to conform with our needs in order for us to be okay and in order for us to have a thriving relationship. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that we make when we subscribe to that lie is thinking that Everything else around us needs to needs to to change. Um, to change and adapt to who we are, and that would be like a narcissist. And a narcissist would want um, would want everyone else to walk around in eggshells around him to be able to uh, conform to to his ways. And when you're doing that, essentially, you're putting your happiness, you're putting mm-hmm. your joy, you're putting everything good in your life at the mercy of somebody else. Exactly. When we actually really have the power and the the control of that, if there's anything we can and do have power and control over, it's ourselves. Yeah, and the it's choices our we make. And it's yeah, also the it's choices important. we make. We're allowed yeah. to do that. We're allowed to choose whether we are going to accept it or not. Um, we seem to be running out of time. What would you like to leave us with? We would love to catch up with you, uh, um, you know, uh, real shortly on our show again, because the topic seems to be quite interesting. And I think people are learning a lot from it as far as relationships are concerned. What message would you like to leave with our viewers this afternoon? Uh, so I think a message of hope. Yeah. Um, we don't want, uh, we want to, we want to inspire people and, and let you, let you know that let people know that there is help out there. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing that you that, that you touched on, and maybe I can just touch on quickly, is you mentioned understanding. And I think just as a as a as a, as a parting words, next time you're angry at someone, try explaining your anger, not expressing your anger, and that. see what difference that makes. That I love makes so that. much of sense. <laughs> I loved that words too. Thank you so much, Jazakla, for joining us this afternoon. Always enticing us into a better space to be able to think about bettering our relationships. We wish you nothing but the best going forward and we hope to catch up okay. with you soon. You do stay safe. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That was Sister Jahara Hassam and her husband Tyre enticing us to have a look at our relationships with Heal for Hope and saying that there is a support structure out there to be able to reach out and better our relationships and create a better environment for ourselves. Um, and also, like I said, it's understanding uh, the relationship, creating the respect levels and getting rid, rid of the narcissism. We're going to go for a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be back with you in a moment. <laughs> 